Welcome to this unit on negatives and multiple negatives. Let's get straight into it. What's the problem? Well, there are two things we have to correct. One, the unnecessary use of negative forms in our writing, and two, the use of double or multiple negative forms. Why is this a problem? If I use a negative, if I tell you what you can't do, you will start to think about what you can do. In other words, negatives cause the reader to do extra work to think what the positive alternative is, and therefore possibly make a mistake in coming to that conclusion. Regarding double negatives, this is easy. In English, we cannot use double negatives or multiple negatives. You may be able to use double negatives in your native tongue, but not in English. Unfortunately, however, even though double negatives are not allowed, they are used in legal writing and when speaking, which then gives the reader a linguistic challenge. What does that sentence mean? Does each negative count as a negative, or do the negatives cancel each other out? Does the negative in a subclause affect the sentence's main clause? The writer who uses double negatives forces the reader to do all of this work and possibly reach an incorrect conclusion. What's the solution? Easy. Use positive structures instead of negative structures where it's possible and don't use double negatives. Remember, positive structures are easier to understand. If you want to quickly recap on double negatives and language structures that might cause double negatives, like negative prefixes, negative adverbs, lie totes and question tags, please click on the links in the video description, which will take you to other language videos and online exercises, which will explain in further detail. Let's take a look at one or two of these a little bit closer, like negative adverbs. Be aware of adverbs with negative connotations. For example, rarely, scarcely, barely, seldom, and hardly. These can all act like negatives. Think about this sentence. He hadn't barely finished the memo when. What exactly does that mean? It was only just finished when, or it was just about to be finished when. It's difficult to work out, isn't it? Another example is that of lightotes. Lightotes are a form of understatement used for emphatic effect. For example, as a lawyer, he's not bad. In other words, I'm saying that as a lawyer, he's very good. The problem comes in when we use lightotes with a word which has got a negative prefix, in which case it might suggest something which is unlikely or uncertain. Think about the following sentence. The accused is not unknown to the witness. Does this mean that the witness knows the accused very well, or only as an acquaintance? It's something that will cause you to sit back and think about what the writer meant. Couldn't it be written in an easier way? Okay. As mentioned, this was just a quick heads up about some of those issues. To find out more, please click on the links in the video description. Now, how do you stop yourself from using unnecessary negative structures? Let's have a look at the unless, the unless plus negative structure, which is commonly found in legal writing. Think about the following sentence. This can be translated into a positive structure by using if and a positive form. For example, we can change this sentence to become, if the evidence is submitted by the deadline, it can be used in the court case. Easy peasy, both to change the structure from unless plus negative to a positive conditional, and to make the reader's life easier as the message is easier to understand. You'll get a chance to practice this rule when you tackle the questions below. Moving on, have a look at this example. Here, a number of negative structures are used. Need not be revalued, not more than two years, and do not disagree. Which ones can we change? Well, 
Not more than two years means up to every two years, and do not disagree means agree. These two can definitely be redrafted. Need not be, however, means don't or doesn't have to be. This use of a negative is okay, although we could reword this in a simpler way. Taking those notes into account, the original quote can be redrafted as the investments don't have to be revalued at intervals of up to every two years if the trustee and beneficiary agree. In that example, we were able to redraft two negatives into positive forms. However, there are cases where this isn't possible or appropriate. In that case, to avoid multiple negatives, it's best to redraft. Take a second to read the following sentence. In this sentence, we have a quadruple negative. This has been created by the unhelpful and incorrect use of neither nor. I include the incorrect use of neither nor because in my job as a proofreader, this is something that I have encountered before. Getting back to the sentence, it would be much easier to break this sentence down into two sentences. My client did not trespass on the property. My client also did not gain unauthorized access to the house. The second sentence can be further simplified by using the positive alternative. My client was authorized to enter the house. Now we have two simple sentences and the multiple negative issue has been resolved. Okay, one last issue. Take a few seconds to think about the errors in this sentence. What's wrong? Nothing. You have to use the negative form when it's clearly easier to understand than the positive. For example, the positive version of this prohibition would be a mistake. You may walk on the pavements, walkways, across bridges, along avenues and roads, use the cycle paths and designated other areas of foot traffic. Needless to say, the use of a negative here is appropriate. But you must remember the rule, one negative per sentence. Okay, let's quickly recap. One, when drafting in English, pay attention to structures in your primary language, which when translated, form a double negative in English. Two, avoid needless negatives wherever possible. Three, in all cases, if there are two or more negative structures, the sentence has to be redrafted. And four, use negative structure if the positive alternative is difficult to define. Okay, now we know what the problem is, why it is a problem, and how to fix the problem, we can now test the rule by doing the questions below. However, if you are unsure about any of the points which I've made, please go back and watch the video again. Feel free to pause the video to review all the examples at your own speed. After you do a question below, you can click to see a suggested answer. Just before you get started, please note the following. Please read the question and the hint carefully to make sure you complete the questions properly. Don't just get stuck into the questions, read what you have to do first. In the suggested answer, there may also be further comments to a question, so please read these carefully as well. The suggested answers are just that, suggested. There may be other also correct ways to answer each question. I've tried to put in as many variants as I can, but for obvious reasons I can't write every single correct answer, so as long as your answer follows the main points highlighted in the suggested answer, your answer should be okay. The questions are designed to practice the rule in this unit, so although you can make further corrections to the rest of the text based on the other rules in this course, the answer only concentrates on the rule presented in this unit. And finally, Please don't get lost in the legalities of the question text. It's there only to provide material to practice the rule, not to be a law lesson. All that being said, off you go.